Hello and welcome to A Service Dogs Partner. I am Annie and this is my co-host Sassy and today we're going to talk about crate training. Crate training can be a very useful tool to uh, teach your dog. Uh, first, one of the things it teaches them is uh, that this is something they can go into and will be released from. And if you are flying and are going to um, put them in a, a kennel um, uh, for on the ride instead of them riding with you, this is for people who, who service dogs who don't have service dogs, or whose service dogs will be riding um, in the belly of the uh, plane. Uh, this teaches them it's okay to go in it. Uh, yes, they're not they're not going to see their owner, but they know their owner is going to uh, show up. So it lowers the anxiety because they've done this before. <coughs> The other reason is, let's say you're going for people who don't have service dogs, they're going on a trip, but they can't take their dog with them, so they leave them at a kennel. Well, again, that teaches them they're going to be coming back, especially when they leave something that is of theirs, like a pillow or a blanket, something from home. Uh, the, the kennel also is a good way for um, to teach your dog this is where they're supposed to sleep. Now, when I first got Sassy, uh, we had... We wanted her to. We she, we hadn't fully tr potty trained her yet, so because um, or at least she hadn't learned the rules of our household of what potty training meant. So the kennel was to if she had an accident, at least it was in the kennel where I could easily clean it up, versus it trying to find it in the house or us accidentally walking into it, not knowing that she had had an accident. So that was a good thing to have. Uh, a side note, when you bring your dog to your home, whether it is from a, a humane society or you're bringing it, adopting the dog from its um, from a home, uh, bring something from from that place. Uh, if you're like from, let's say you're adopting your dog from a, um, a breeder, bring like a blanket or a piece of clothing that has the scent of its mother and its siblings. This will make the transition from there to your home much easier. Otherwise, the puppy is going to whine because it's looking for its mother and siblings. Scent is so strong with animals that if they are able to at least smell the scent, it calms them a little bit so they're able to relax and actually go to sleep. The same is with even with the Humane Society dog. They're, go they are already in this place um, and even though the Humane Society may be uh, an anxious place for them, if you bring something from that place and bring it with them, it at least has a, a little bit of a familiarity. Now, if they have a um, favorite toy or blanket, that would probably be what you would bring. Uh, what I would do is uh, bring in a um, another blanket or toys to exchange it with because to many societies they're always after more toys and blankets uh, to give their dogs um, that dogs and cats that come into their humane society come here girl over here <clears throat> good girl that way there's an even trade and if you bring extras they're not going to turn those down uh, so what you do is you get the crate uh, when you get the crate make sure that there is a solid bottom you don't want it to be the um metal brackets because you want the, um otherwise it's you it with it's very uncomfortable think about setting it on yourself uh we put a, a nice big pillow in it uh you could put a towel in it you could put a blanket in it something's for them to lay on and then we put the toy put the toys in there um I gave her something to chew on. Now, the th here's the thing to worry about if you are a light sleeper or things wake you up, is that uh, they will chew on it in the middle of the night and it will hit the metal bars or the side of the bed and you will hear them chewing. So if you're a light sleeper, that may not be a good idea. Maybe what you could do is give them maybe a stuffy. Uh, if it squeaks, again, that might wake you up. <clears throat> so if you can give them a stuffy that doesn't squeak, that might actually work better. Expect it, especially with the puppy, for it to be destroyed. Um, in, in one of my other videos, I suggested get as many uh, toys that go on sale because you're going to need it, especially with puppies. Uh, this is one of the reasons. <laughs> so when we had Sassy, uh, one of the first things I did was I would tr teach her to go to bed. It was the, it was the, uh, the command and I would have her go there and I would always give her a treat. 
um, for that to teach her this is a good thing and this went on for a couple of days and soon it began to be um, I would put her to bed and then as soon as I came in I would go ahead and unlatch it and she would um, for the first couple of days she would immediately come out and I was already going to bed and um, she would look around and then she would come right back and she'd be in bed because I was in bed so um, now to be honest I actually have the hall we have my room goes out into the hallway and I have it, the hallway blocked so it doesn't go into the living room because I'm trying to make sure that she doesn't get in any trouble um, down that way and I have made sure that she actually has made it through the night without having an accident so she's already learned that so so this is uh, all after she's learned okay we sleep through the night we don't have an accident and I have that gate up to for her to uh, know this is where she's supposed to be uh, you could if you don't want them in the hallway you could easily just close your door and they're exploring your bedroom um, either way uh, she's now learned that yes she can come out of the kennel but it is still bedtime because you are going to bed hi yeah but they don't they don't so that is what I do and then after the first few days when she realized she can come in I started opening the gate when I, for the the door um, for when she would come when I would go to bed come on girl come on lay down lay down lay down thank you when I would go to bed and then she and it would be oh you open the gate okay and she'd lay, she'd lay her head right back down um, then it started being I would put her to bed but I wouldn't close the gate and she just sat there and ate her thing and she stayed in bed sometimes she would come out and she'd check things out but she didn't there was no banging on the gate or trying to get out she just kind of went okay you're there and then she would either lay in the hallway or she'd go back to her kennel very calm I'd come into bed she'd raise her head and she but she would be in her kennel that's where she knew bed was Something I want to add about the kennel though, this is actually very important when you're start trying to decide what type of kennel to get. The kennel should be big enough for your dog to stand up in and be able to turn around in comfortably with a little bit of extra room. That is the recommended size. Uh, I would, uh, to um, double check, uh, I would look at, uh, when you're looking at kennels, a lot of times they'll show um dog breeds that are on there and if you're really not sure like you have a big dog and or you're kind of in between like the dog is in between and you're not really sure where your dog fits uh, ask a uh salesperson especially if you go to a place like petco or pet smart one of those pet places uh they can normally tell give you a better idea of a good dog crate size now if you have a puppy and you, see, you start out with a puppy. Uh, I've seen some people, they get the uh, crate that is going to be the size the dog is supposed to be. Now I say supposed to be because like a golden retriever. A golden retriever can be one, can be one size, like the average size, or they can be a little smaller, or they could be much bigger. And then you got the dogs where they are mixed, like Sassy here. Sassy is mixed with some sort of hound. We're not sure what type. So we really didn't know how big she was going to be. We got the biggest crate uh, that was used for our golden retriever, and she was a uh, our first golden retriever. She was a she was a good sized golden retriever because she was a working dog, and both her parents were really big. And we just happened to look out that that crate worked for her. Now, uh, so really look at it. Um, well, the reason why people start with a puppy size and slowly get bigger is because they're not sure how big the, ca the, uh, the kennel is going to be at the end. Now a lot of people they try to buy uh, the kennel that is going to be the final kennel that they're going to get for their dog because they don't want to spend the, the money. So it's kind of a guessing game of what it's going to be. I would suggest um, expecting that you may have to buy more than one kennel and um, you can either a keep the kennel for when you're going to get a dog uh, again or you can uh, donate the kennel to um, a friend or you could send it off to like Goodwill or something uh, we have kept all our kennels because like I said uh, we're dog owners and we know we'll get dogs after um, our dogs will actually pass away uh, our the our longest living dog was 14 years old so and she was our, our first golden retriever so 
but um, if you have a little dog, I say a Chihuahua, they may actually live longer. Uh, so, and but a bigger dog, like say a Great Dane, they may live to be, um, they may only live to be like maybe ten. So it, it's kind of a, it's really a guessing game. I mean, our golden retriever we expected on her to only live to be twelve. She actually lived to be fourteen. Um, and our, we, when we had our corgi, she was only twelve when we expected her to outlive our golden retriever. So it, it, you never know. You really don't. Uh, getting back to the crate training. Um, I didn't want a crate in my room. It was literally just to train her uh, not to go to the bathroom inside the house in the middle of the night and to teach her where her bedroom was and where she was supposed to be. So once she got used to uh, going to bed when I told her to and um, basically she not give not demand to be let out um, when she should be in bed, I basically took the crate down. I, got, I took it out and all I did was leave the pillow and then I just told her go to bed and she went right on her pillow. Now I will admit she be, she did test the waters. They will always test the water see what they can what they can do and she thought that um, she could come to the gate that was in the hallway and come out. Well I thought that meant she had to go potty so I put her in to go potty and then I, when she came in I put her to bed but she didn't get the treat that time so she learned real fast that the treat was only for when you went to bed so she stopped at, stopped demanding to go outside unless she really did have to go outside and there are a couple times where I bring her inside and I put her to bed and she finishes the treat and she actually really has to go so she goes outside and I bring her in and she knows she has to go to bed and she goes to bed um so that is something that that crates are actually really good at teaching and um yes um just telling me i'm not doing a good job <laughs> so um the, that's the reason for why i have a crate now because she's my service dog i wanted her to get used to being in my room uh i would suggest that if you have a crate it would always be in your room because you're trying to teach your dog thank you can you lay down for me Lay down, lay down. I need you to lay down for me. I'm still talking. We're still doing the video. Come on, lay down, lay down. Thank you. Um, because it's a good way for you to watch them. Uh, when you have a puppy, the it's a good way for you to be able to hear them when they need to actually go outside uh, to be able to go potty. Sassy. Come on, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down. Butt down, butt down, butt down. Thank you. There we go. Uh, to hear them do outside, especially when they're still a puppy, because uh, think puppy, small bladder, have to go to the bathroom more often. Uh, so that's very, very uh, often, especially if you don't have a timer to go off every so often to get them used to going to the to go have to go to the bathroom, so they don't have these accidents. Hi. Yes, that's enough. So. Um, that's one of the reasons. Now, some people they have a kennel that goes into the room room for them and I'm talking about people who do not have service dogs uh, and that's where they leave their uh, they put the dog in the crate instead of putting them outside uh, I see some people who do that because their dog is known to um, destroy the house and they don't and they don't really have a place where they can keep the dog where they're not going to get into trouble uh, so uh, if you do that make sure their dog has food and water again make sure that kennel is nice and big but know that that dog's not going to be able to be protect your house. I mean, the dog is, the dog is in the kennel. Uh, they're not going to be able to go after the, uh, the bad guys at all. So um, that dog pretty much becomes just a, uh, a pet for uh, no uh, extra um, alarm, no alarm system when you are um, away. But um, otherwise... Um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I would have the, the uh, kennel inside uh, your room. And some people, they keep the kennel as long as the dog is alive. And that's perfectly fine, too. Uh, I've known people who, they keep the kennel, and that's just where the dog sleeps. They just leave the door open, the, cat, the dog sleeps in there, and they've actually turned it into like a nightstand or a little table like they put a uh, piece of wood on top of it and they lay stuff on top of it so that it actually has more than one use which is really cool and uh so the dog has a place to sleep and you have another little table where you can like 
put your, put a lamp or something and the dog is right by you so that's my talk on that's our talk on uh kenneling and tra and training your dog with uh to get used to kennels i hope you got some uh interesting tips if you have any tips that you'd like to share i'd love to hear them down in the comment section uh if you have any questions or um ex uh, would you like me to cover anything that you have questions on please write it down in the comments uh, if you liked our video please hit like and subscribe to hear, get more uh, videos from us and thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time on a service dogs partner until next time bye